Peace, 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 peace and black power family. Welcome to another episode of Knowledge Radio, place where knowledge is born. This is your host, Knowledge Born Alive. I'm here with the man and myth, the legend, the award winning documentarian. I think that's a word. You know what I'm saying? I'm rolling with it, though. You understand? Uh, the ultimate content creator, you know, uh, life, imitating life on the screen, the real deal. So, we're here with the director and the creator of the award winning series, Black Beach, White Beach. Ladies and gentlemen, brothers and sisters, my brother from another mother, Ricky Kelly is in the building. Thank you. Thank you for having me, brother. I'm glad to be on your platform. What's going on with you? Hey, you know, we, we just ghetto children out here trying to make it. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's, <laughs> like, like, that's what he said. You know what I'm saying? What I'm saying? Um, I know. Going into the Black Power Awards, uh, I reached out to you and was like, hey, need to get you on the platform so we can kind of showcase, you know, the talent and see what's going on and, and ensure that, the, you know, the family becomes familiar with you and your work and, you know, your vision and creativity. So, you know, we had to do a, a run back, you know, check in and see, you know, what's going on, uh, how you've been, how the fan been. I know this is a family based business, you know, one thing that I love for real, you know, and it's a movement together to ensure, you know, your family's future. So I'm going to back up and give you the microphone and, you know, you could kind of update us on, on what's been going on. Okay. Well, um, we got a Hollywood deal. Um, we got on Amazon Prime and um, uh, uh, Gravitas Ventures, one of the, well, the largest uh, distribution company in Hollywood. They uh, gave us a deal, and um, they put us on several platforms, Amazon Prime, um, iTunes, Xbox, YouTube, Voodoo, I mean, no, no, Hulu, uh, Pluto TV, and a couple of other different platforms. Some are paid for, some are streaming services that come with your account. So, we, you know, we're blessed to get that, you know, um, like you said, it is a family business. You know, my my wife, when I first decided to make this my first film, you know, she was so supportive. You know, a lot of, you know, from me not being at that time uh, uh, an accomplished filmmaker or really a filmmaker, you know, she took a chance and believed in me, you know, and, and I have a good, you know, support system. I have a beautiful daughter that we're trying to uh, get into the game, but Right now, we've um, I wrote out a, a documentary called Chitlins, and wanted to introduce my wife to the film that side of the industry, so she could see the hard work, of course, that it takes. And you know, uh, because you know, I travel a little bit, and it's like I want her to get a taste of it, you know. And that's what the other side does. That's what uh, white people do. They they bring their family into the business, and that's what I wanted to do. Not because that's what they do, but you know, I wanted to give my family a future and 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 we here at kelly entertainment productions been working hard to uh make some quality work and her film is called chitlins um yeah, from soul food to well, excuse me from slave food to soul food and the premise of this film is it's it's, it's um we all know what chitlins are and a lot of us know the history of chitlins and there's a lot of us that don't know the history of chitlins and it's funny that my my daughter we were having uh thanksgiving dinner like last year year before last and we had chitlins and you know because i grew up eating chitlins during special occasions holidays and so forth and i was telling my daughter about you know well i was trying to give her to eat chitlins she was like no that i'm not eating that i'm not gonna eat that and i was like well let me tell you the history of it so i explained to her, of course you know that the white slave owners that would slaughter the pigs and they give us the guts, the parts and the feet, the ears, the stuff that they didn't want. And our ancestors turned it into a, a delicacy and she should try it. And she was still like, nope. But as I'm telling her that I can see a sparkle in her eye, I can see like an uh, interest. And my daughter's really a special child, really a bright child. And it inspired me. It was like, well, if she doesn't really know the history of Chitlin, maybe there's a lot of other people that don't. So we decided to tell that story, but from a different aspect or a different standpoint. We wanted to um, explain the history 
and also the political side of chillers because we as, as, as black people, we tend to sometimes bully each other for eating chillers. Like you see these memes on Facebook where people say, why are you eating slave food or why are you eating that, you know, hard guts or shit tubes or whatever they call it, you know? And it's like, you know, to me, it's an, a tradition that was passed down from my ancestors. And to honor them, that's what I wanted to do. And that's why I wanted to, we wanted to tell the story, you know? So um, me, myself, I'm working on a documentary called um, Humble in the Jungle. It's uh, one of my best friends is Mike G from the Jungle Brothers. You remember the Jungle Brothers uh, back in the day, the rap group? Well, yeah. Um, yeah, well, the jungle, Mike and I, the jungle, the brother, the jungle, the, brothers, the brother. Yeah. yeah, that's my man. That's <laughs> my man. Yeah. And um, we've um, we 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 both own businesses. We both own plumbing businesses. Doing all. He's a performer. You know, he goes overseas. He's big, still big overseas, and they do a lot of shows here. But um, his story is that. Mike is the type of guy, he's a, a really humble guy. You would work beside him or, or be around him and never know that he's who he is because he's just so um, not soft-spoken. He's just a humble guy. And Mike would go overseas and do shows in Europe where they're big at and come back at RDU, our airport, at 2 o'clock in the morning. I go pick him up or you pick him up at 2 in the morning and he's at work at 7 o'clock that same morning up under your house like it's nothing. You know what I'm saying? So his humility is just in his work ethic and his family. You know, he's just a it's just a great story. And, you know, DJ Red Alert is Michael's uncle. And he kind of raised him after uh, Mike's uh, uh, mother passed. So uh, we're giving uh, Mike's story and what how he affected, you know, great artists. You know, he named Q-Tip. You know, he's um, he's a legend. And I just want to tell this. And he's a great guy. So I'm telling his story. So be on the look for that. That's called Humble in the Jungle. And we have uh, Southern Documentary Fund um, um, has signed on. So we're a nonprofit, not a nonprofit. If you were to make a donation to our, our film through the Southern Documentary Film Fund, then, you know, it's, it's, it's uh, tax, uh, tax deductible. But we just got a lot of things going on, you know, and uh, I got ideas for things that I like to do. With, with with this industry, it's all about financing. It's all about money. And, you know, I, I pretty much financed my first film, Black Beach, White Beach, myself, my wife and I. And we, we had a fundraiser where we raised, I think, $15,000. And, and that helped. But uh, we spent quite a bit, like uh, upwards of $90,000 to make that film. And of course, I haven't retrieved it yet, but I didn't go into it with the idea of this is uh, I want to make money. I want to. Of course, I don't want to lose money, but I went into it with the idea of telling this story because I think the history of that event needs to be known. And, and I, I'm just proud and, and honored that those people in that town, which is Atlantic Beach, um, South Carolina, you know, people think Myrtle Beach. It is Myrtle Beach because Myrtle Beach is. Um, where the people stay because there's not enough uh, infrastructure in Atlantic Beach, South Carolina. So, but that's where the event started uh, almost 40 years ago. This year will be the 40th year, and uh, it's a great event. And I wanted to tell the story and get the history of it. Actually, my parents met in um, Myrtle Beach, South Carolina. So, I mean Atlantic Beach. So I could have been made down there. You know, I say that all the time. Like, hey, it, <laughs> it, it's it's a, it's a special place. It's a special place for me, you know. It's 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 like the mecca. <laughs> but uh, as long as we go down, I, you know. And right now, this is where we at with the movie, with the uh, with the situation. Okay, they don't want us there. Myrtle Beach does not uh, want to roll out the hospitality mat for us, which they roll out for the white people, which is the Harley Davidson rally, which is the week before Black Bike Week. For those who aren't familiar with. The story, okay? In Myrtle Beach, South Carolina, every year during Memorial Day, we have a festival and it's called Black Bike Week or the Atlantic Beach Memorial Day Bike Festival is the, the real name. But um, the week before that is the Harley Davidson Festival, which is the, the, the white rally. And the treatment is vastly different. You know, we are the systemic racism that exists there. They bring in 700 police officers to to harass us, 
um, on top of the force that they already have. It's just like a police state. It's, you know, they clearly do not want us. The mayor doesn't want us there. And um, the city isn't welcoming. So we have kind of moved away from Myrtle Beach and kind of up like North Myrtle Beach, Sandy Point, Sandy, uh, some of the smaller communities and written out places up there to try to uh, stay away from spending our money where we're not wanted. But if, you know, some people are the mindset, let's just end the event. Don't go up there. Don't give them no money. Don't go down there, period. And I'm like, but what about the history of the event? What about that small black beach, Atlantic Beach, which is one of the last black beaches in America? So I did this film for them to bring attention and enlightenment to their situation. So if we stop going, that community will suffer. So I'm not a fan of that. My, I, my, my idea is if you go to that event, make sure you pay homage and go spend your money in Atlantic Beach, which is our people, the black people. I know I've been rambling on, but uh, brother, feel free to interject any questions you want, anything you want to know. Uh, what was that feeling like for you, you know, after seeing everything come to fruition? What was it like for you uh, and the family? And then especially going forward, you know, receiving that award, award winning documentary, that, that kind of stamp, that kind of put, along with the reception, you know, how has it been? You know, it's that. Wow, <laughs> it's 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 just incredible, man. You know, it's there's nothing like when you you guys reached out to me about the uh, Black Power. Uh, I won the um, the uh, Charlotte Black Film Festival for Best Documentary. That's where the award winning title came from. I was nominated, of course, for a Black Power Award, which I am eternally grateful for you guys for that. And um, I came in second place in the North Carolina um, Black Film Festival. We we got second. Mm. Um, so the receiving accolades and being accepted by your 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 your, your people, man. You know, because I go to these events, right. right? As a as a black director, you I'm put in situations where there's not many of us in there in rooms that you know. There are not many of us. There are not many black directors out there like we would think. So, you know, right. um, and then they aren't like me. <laughs> they like those, the ones, I don't, don't want to call them out, but I mean, it is what it is. You know, they <laughs> they not like me. They not like us. They not black power. They not black, you know, they don't have our, our, our agenda first, you know. Mm. And I, I wear Tims. I wear baseball caps. I am who I am. I'm this true right. brother that you see sitting in front of you now. And I refuse to change and I refuse to, to change and, and assimilate to get more of their attention. You know what I'm saying? It's take me as you are. Cause I, I'm 50 years old. You know, I, my, my daughter is going to take over this one day. So, you know, right. I, my integrity comes first. You know, I love my people and all my stories I want to revolve around my people and our history. Yeah. I don't ever want to get to a place where I'm comfortable where I can do one of the, I leave that to my daughter, like I said, when she takes over. If she want to do a film for them, she can. But me, I'm doing it for our people, so for the culture. But receiving the accolades, it felt great, man, you know, to, to cause it took three and a half, four years to, to, to finish this film. And it was a lot of hard work and it was a lot of, a lot of work, a lot of money, a lot of time away from my family, you know, and just to to to, to win an award and to be told, or or more specifically, as you know, a Black Power nominee, Black Power Award nominee, that was just incredible. Like my people accept, it. my people appreciate this. The people that right. I made this movie for appreciate it. So that. That's it for me. My legacy is is confirmed. You know, if, if nothing else comes out of this, I did that, you know, so it is what it is. But um, again, I can't say stress enough. I love my people. And you see me on Facebook. I, I, I carry the torch for us. I try to. Uh, you know, I don't back right. down from nothing or nobody. It's, it's, it is. I'm too. I never play those kind of games of trying to, uh, again, assimilate or make them want me. You know what I'm saying? It is what it is. This right. is what you get. So. But, um, you know, it's, it's, it's just been a great ride. You know, it's 
when I come into um, you know, my room and I and I and I look every day at these posters behind me on my wall and just you know, and man, the people that tell me I hate to get emotional, you know, about it, but you know, that's right. that's just uh, it's a great feeling. It's nothing like I've ever received before. That's what's up. Um, and oh, when I heard the story behind the story, that's why I was so glad that I got a chance to get a hold to you to hear the story behind the story. You know what I'm saying? Uh, oftentimes we hear and we see the finished product, but nobody knows what happened behind the scenes. You see what I'm saying? Like, right. like your family coming together. This, this is your family business. And y'all do every facet of the visual experience. Too. I, I want to, I want to get into that also. You see what I'm saying? Every facet of the visual experience. So, you know, you're taking something, your, your, your thought child and allowing your thought child to be nurtured. And you know, painstaking stuff behind the scenes to put it all together, and then you see it manifest. You see it come into come into the physical world, and to to see that thought child that started off as a determined idea in your head, you know, come into fruition and to be received. You know what I mean? And then received by the intended audience that you intended it for from its inception. You know, so it's like. I want to tell our story. Ancestrally, I, I want to give homage and pay respect to those who walked this way before me, to my family, to my ancestors, and then share this um, story with our future generation. You see what I'm saying? So, I mean, pass off to you, you know, and this is like the main staple and the reason behind the platform to get these stories out in front of our people, you know, across the globe to you know, inspire us to control our narrative so we're not reduced to, you know, white authors or white documentarians, you know, the BBC, you know, any of those, you know, uh, larger platforms come and trying to swallow up our story and, and give us, you know, uh, a, a couple of snapshots and then misrepresent it. You see what I'm saying? So for you to take hold and to stay, you know, stay steadfast in that position, I, I think, you know, that is a, uh, the highest salute that can be possibly given, you know what I'm saying, and that you're passing it on as a legacy uh, to your daughter and to the future generations. I just had to say that um, real quick. So, you, you know, it was, it's, it's almost like it was, it was meant to be, you know, and I, I, there's another important story that how this all really came about. For years of riding down there, right, going down there every year, um, I had some good years, you know, um, but I had a lot of bad years where, you know, we were just being harassed and roadblocks, all kind of silly stuff, unnecessary police uh, harassment. And a guy that I used to go down there with, his name was Dwayne, JB. He was my right hand man, my, my road dog, my, my wing man, whatever you want to call him. That was my man. So we used to go down together. Him and a few other friends I went down with, but primarily uh, Joanne and JB. I used to like, like if we towed our bikes down, we towed our bikes down on the back, you know, truck or uh, SUV. And on the ride back, I'd be frustrated about how we were treated, you know, how they jacked up the hotel rooms. Because the week before, the rooms would be ninety nine dollars. Then you come back to Black Bike Week is two hundred eighty nine dollars. So it's triple the prices. You know what I'm saying? Uh, food, probably everything goes up when we're there, you know, and, you know, of course, the harassment. So on the ride back, I would be telling JB, yo, this is messed up, bro. I can't, I, I can't, you know, this is, I'm tired of this. And I said, one day I'm going to tell this story. You know, one day I'm going I'm to I'm show the world how we treat it down here. And Jay used to say, yo, yo, this, do it, Big Rick, do it. Yeah, you the man, do it, Big Rick. He really believed in me. And, um, he moved away and went to New York and got a job, and um, he moved back down south to uh, Chapel Hill. He had his first baby. He was like 40 years old, had his first child, and six months later, he died. And damn, what time I tell this? But he died. And when he died, it. Uh, I went to his funeral, and as I'm in the church, looking at his body, you know, watch, you know, 
he, I swear he spoke to me. He said, Rick, you can know you can do this. Tell the story. Now is the time to tell the story. And I went home, and that's when I told my wife that I wanted to do this, this movie. So it's an emotional thing with me. You know, I've been blessed. Damn, this is terrible. On TV. But yeah, that's 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 where this really all came from. Just um, you know, um, it was like I was put on a path and beyond my control, and, and here we are. You know, so I know there's you know a higher power. I know there's something greater than myself out here that 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 got me where I'm at. So I didn't mean to go get on to a spiritual or you know. Uh, emotional rant but you know that's the truth of this 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 film and that's why it's so special to me and i think that's why it resonated with people because um you know the passion you you don't expect a a person who hasn't done a film to have the successes that i had you know it's just like it was meant to be and i'm grateful and thankful for everybody and everyone that, that, that was a part of this you know and the support you gave a lot of support and your community, our, you know, gave a lot of support. So I'm good. I can just pull it together and, you know, but hey. Yeah, yeah. So let's talk about the other aspects, the other services uh, that you provide also uh, to the family so that they know, you know, the depth. Well, you mean, um, well, I'm not, you know, doing, um, I, I'm just kind of focused on doing the documentaries. And we don't do weddings. We don't, I don't do rap videos. I don't, you know, I don't try to hone my craft in that way. I, I do it by researching things. Um, and, and actually, I'm, I've been researching. Um, I'm act- actively starting production on those two films that, I, you know, Chitlins is about halfway done. And um, mm. Humble in the Jungle is... Oh man, we we've done a lot of uh, concert footage and interviewed some great some great um, legends in the game, but we still got a lot to go as far as trying to formulate the story. The you know each story needs drama. Somebody needs drama, but Mike ain't got no drama in his life, so it's like it's kind of hard to tell his story. But I've also been recently, whew, for the last, I've been I don't know if you're familiar with this faction of YouTube that's got. Um, this guy, Nature Boy, and you know, of course, I know you know Sonetta, yeah. Sonetta right? Sonetta TV. Right. Sonetta right. is like the godfather of all, you know, the conscious community as far as what's on the internet. So, but it's all these little factions of groups have formed. You know, you got Young Pharaoh, you got, uh, you know, right. it's, 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 it's fractured and everybody's attacking each other. It's like a, a circular firing squad. Nobody, everybody wants to be a leader but nobody wants to, you know, to, to step up and give real leadership. And we're following behind, people are following behind this guy, Nature Boy out here in the jungle. He's here now. And just, I just really been researching what's going on and that doing a lot of listening. And I, mm-hmm. I haven't decided how I want to do it, but I'd like to somehow, um, um, well, I know how I want to do it. I, I, it's called these YouTube streets. I, you know, I've written it out what I want to do, but I haven't actually started uh, production on that, but that's that's a project of mine that I'd like to get involved because YouTube is is you know it's a powerful voice or a powerful platform that in a lot of cases is not being used you know for good for what we what we need you know you got Tariq out here you know telling people not to vote you got um, these different not to you know you got of course Omar who was in my film and I, I just want to show the whole gamut from the top to bottom. Like, you know, these YouTube, uh, what do they call them? YouTube, uh, 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 comment- not commentators, but uh, con- uh, content providers, you know, and, and kind of tell that story as well. But, and of course, when I do start, I'm definitely going to come to you and for an interview, for sure. <laughs> since you're in this, I say, excuse since me to come on these YouTube come streets. <laughs> Yeah, this excuse me to call me Durham. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Check out that. And where you? Uh, that museum. I wanted to check out that museum up there. So, yeah, it's a lot of you know, it's a lot of culture here in this city of Durham. You know, it's Black Wall Street. This is Black where Wall you Street, know. Yeah. This is Black Wall Street. You know, we've got yeah. some great people have come through this town. 
and or um, uh, come from this town. And another project that I had a pet project of mine is uh, God. What's the brother's name? He really invented hip hop. People don't know. People say, okay, hip hop started here, but when you hear this brother, uh, Pygmy Markham. You ever heard of Pygmy Markham before? Yes. Yes, Big Me Markham is from Durham, North Carolina. And if you hear mm. a song called for I, for all those people out there, just Google "Income." Here comes the judge, and Here comes listen the judge. to yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. When that yeah. when that beat breaks, you know that's hip hop. You know what I'm saying? That was the right. first time I, I've ever heard hip hop done. You know, you got that old scabbardoo bebop kind of thing. But when he did what what he did, he is truly the founder of hip hop. It was actually a guy in New York, DJ Hollywood, who was a friend of Pygmy Markham, took him to the Bronx, and they were partners and were friends, you know. And Pygmy Markham was a comedian and, um, you know, an entertainer. Uh, but they say this is the legend that DJ Hollywood stole Pygmy Markham's style and, in the Bronx, and that's that was really the foundation of hip hop. Not. Um, um, cool Herc and 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 those group, but they got it from DJ Hollywood, who got it from Pygmy Markham. So I, I like that's like another pet. I got so many pet projects that I like to do. What I really like to do is a Black Vice. You ever heard? You know, you watch mm. the show Vice, right? Right, right. I want to do a Black Vice. I want to do uh, shows, short shows, fifteen minute segments. You know, that just talk about our issues, stuff that we like, like. Big Rams on cars, um, just our culture. We got so many things that they're copying from us. You know what I'm saying? But we we, we know about, but the world doesn't know about. You know some of the things in our culture, and that's why I like to do a black bite, some quirky stories. You know that 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 revolve around us. So you know, I got like 20 stories written now already lined up that I I I just got to get the money to go out here and, and shoot them. You know, but I, I've got them written out. That's the process I take. I'll, I'll formulate the 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 uh, what I like to do in my mind. I put it on the whiteboard, which is over there, and and start adding more and more to it, and formulate the story, and uh, get a good team together. And shout out to David Iverson, my editor. You, it, you, it's hard to make a movie by yourself. I don't think it was just the wife and I started out shooting. We were the ones that that went out there and that first couple of years and. But I, I realized that in order to bring the product that I wanted to the masses, I needed some help. So thank, shout out to David Iverson, my editor. And, um, you know, because it would have took me 20 years, 10 years to learn to edit at a pace that, you know, that, that he's right. at. So um, it's, it, it's teamwork. You know, I had some good people around me. My, my, my um, like, Anson Osaka. Uh, Umar helped me out, David Hux, some of these people that just I, I owe so much for being a part of the project. You know, it's, it's teamwork makes dream work, though. You know, we 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 need to reach out to each other, but I try to keep it um keep it in house, you know. Agreed. Agreed, agreed, agreed. Yeah. Um so definitely, if you need my help with any of uh, the, the contacts and some of the people that you, you're looking to work with, you know what I'm saying, you just holler at me and we can, uh, you know, get that definitely. together. Definitely. And, um, I need some co-producers. Ever. Maybe, you know what I'm saying, this in the early state, I tell people all the time, just get down with me. You know what I'm saying? It was a lot of people that I gave opportunities to to be a part of this. You know, this. I was like, and I guess they didn't have the faith in me. They didn't but, you know, it's like, you know, kind of thing. And I'm like, dude, I'm telling you, get down, get with me. You know what I'm saying? I'm looking for producers, you know, associate people that can put their name on this film and be a part of this. When I travel to film festivals, they go with me kind of thing. You know what I'm saying? Invest in something bigger than yourself. You know, don't just, I'm not going to take somebody money or take, because it's my money. I'm putting it in myself, you know, so. When I when I start a project, man, bro, like that, I'm I'm telling you, you would be a, a perfect a uh, perfect person to be a part of this, not just just somebody I interview, somebody that can be a, a co-producer. You know what I'm saying? Think big. Let's let's do some big things because I can't do everything. You know, I'm working on two or three projects now, and I need people that can, 
you know, in different parts of the country that can we can all come together and and make a great project, you know, because that's what it yeah. takes teamwork. So yeah, sign that up. I need I need saw. Uh, like I said, uh, I mean, you got polite. I I I met all these people, but primarily I I I'd like you know the the people Sonetta, uh polite um, Umar Young Pharaoh um, who else is you know Red Pill Blue Pill um, and some of the people that I might not know about this you know like uh, but to get away from Sonetta's, uh because the House of Consciousness has kind of kind of not falling off I don't want to say that but they're you know. It's, it's it's divided. <laughs> the House of Consciousness is divided. So that's how all these splinter things came out. You know, uh, Nature Boy came through, uh, sat on the couch. You know, um, him and Pharaoh together sat on the couch. You know, and now look, you got a whole cottage industry of people that are trying to, I guess, I don't want to say destroy Nature Boy, but to Get him in check. Get him, you know, uh, even though sometimes we go a little too far getting in people's personal business and, and how they live in their lives. Because I'm of the mindset, you know, you do you, man. That's you. I'm not going to spend my energy trying to stop you from destroying yourself or whoever wants to follow you, you know. But uh, I hate ignorance. I hate when, you know, people give fake uh, information out, you know, that pseudo information and just nonsense. And then somebody else hears it and they go, you know, pairing it out to other people. And now we got a whole generation of ignorance running around. You know, I believe in fact, I believe in research. I don't necessarily Google everything, pick up a book, you know, and um, go places, travel, you know, go to the motherland, though I haven't been. But, you know, what I'm saying as far as some of these people that are speaking on Kevin and speaking on um, the motherland and never been, you know, um, it's, mm. it's, 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 it's amazing. So, I want to tell that story. I want to show where we are in our community, how in these YouTube streets, like I said, I like to call it because it's YouTube has become such a you know, huge platform and it's just with fraction, man. These people are fighting on there. They're doxing each other. You know what doxing is, right? When, when um, that's the new thing now, doxing. That's when you find somebody, you, you got to beef with somebody online. They, so everybody's trying to be on top of the pile. As far as who wants to be the voice of the black community, the conscious community. And what they do is they find out where you work, or where you live, and who your family is, and they start putting your personal information online. And that's dangerous because mm. there's some crazy people out here that really believe that these people are speaking the truth and they want to, they clout chasing so hard that there's no, you know, you got Hassan Campbell out here, you got Mm -hmm. You know, and, and a lot of people's lives have been threatened, you know, uh, behind stuff. It's, it's like a dangerous world out in these YouTube streets. And and I want to yeah. just find a way to tell that complete story of where we at and maybe find resolution where we can all come together and realize that everybody's, you know, it's too many, too many, you know, uh, chiefs and not enough Indians. You know, everybody can't be a leader. I don't consider myself a leader at all. I'm not a well-spoken, articulate. I try to be, but I realize there are other people out here that can speak much better than me and their minds are sharper than mine and I can fall in line. But as long as you are righteous and right and exact, I can do that. You know what I'm saying? But I'm not going to fall behind some clown that's just because he's he, 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 he the flavor of the moment. You know what I'm saying? It's just like, no, right. I'm not going to do that. You know, I know this controversy with uh, Dr. Umar. I, I, I appreciate do, uh, Umar so much for what he did for my film as far as helping me out. When I reached out to uh, Boyce Watkins, you know, he wanted to charge me $500 an hour mm. for an interview. Mm. And I'm like, bro, first of all, it's a documentary. You can't pay people to be in your documentary. You know what I'm saying? The integrity of it is com compromised when you do that. So you know, and I, I was turned around by him. Um, what's the brother that runs with uh, 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 him now? Um, he's from Winston-Salem, Dr. Claude Anderson. He was a friend mm -hmm. of my uncle who was a doctor in, in Winston-Salem, gave birth to uh, a lot of like 90 percent of the black people that were born in High Point and Winston-Salem back in the day. He was the only black obstetrician or black doctor that gave birth. And 
Dr. Claude Anderson knows, knew my uncle, rest in peace. He knew my uncle, and I reached out to him on him, like, you know, this is my people to help me out. Nope. You know, so, I, but I'm, mm. I'm not holding grudge. Everything came out like it is. I don't want to sound like, oh, I'm just, but as far as, like I said, that's all a part of the conscious community, you know, and um, we got right. some issues that, that we need to work out, and I hope that um, we can come together and um, as a people, and, and 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 move forward because we're divided really bad right now, and it's just it's it's not helping us. You know, we got too many chiefs, and like I said, not enough Indians. And I watched, uh, you know, young Pharaoh attack uh, the Honorable Lewis Farrakhan. You know, I grew up on Farrakhan. I went to both Million Man marches. I, I kind of took it personal. You know, I was like, yo, this is so mm -hmm. disrespectful, brother. You know what I'm saying? That man has right. done so much for our people. You've done nothing and been nowhere to, to question, you know what I'm saying, that brother right there. You know, and mm -hmm. oh, he killed Farrakh. I mean, he killed Malcolm X. And oh, yeah. It's so much miseducation and misknowledge that's out here, you know, too. So we, we got to get a handle on that. I know I'm getting away from the subject, but it's just so many things. Oh, it's that, all in the same subject, all in the same subject. You the, know, the, we, the misrepresentation. That's the real thing about controlling the narrative. There's an endless budget. There is an endless budget for the destruction and misrepresentation of black people. It's endless. You see what I'm saying? And it's a very small, small, small budget that's out there uh, for our resurrection and our reformation. You see what I'm saying? Like, we, we'll stand out in front of our mama's house and be talking shit about our mama's house. You understand? Yeah. Like, oh, it's yeah. messed up. Like, you live here. You live in right. this house. And exactly. you stand in front of the house talking exactly. about the house instead of cleaning up the house. You see what I'm saying? Exactly. Like, clean up the house. One room at a time. One one mess at a time. Whatever the case That's may it. be. And let's, let's get busy. We don't have no... We won't have time to be complaining about the house. We'll all come out the house and look at the house and say, we was instrumental in the resurrection and the restoration of this house. You see what I'm saying? So whether that's the conscious house, uh, wh whatever the case may be, we have a, a equal stake in its uh, resurrection and its rise. You see what I'm saying? Now, you might got some folks that be like, you know, if if I help clean this thing up, then they won't need me no more. You understand? So right. they, they were, they'd rather profit while the house is, you know, destroyed, where, while the, the virtual community looks like the, the hoarders show. Have you ever seen that hoarders yes, show? Yes, yes. You know, they go into the house and they see all this stuff in there and it seems overwhelming. There's no way, you know, that it could ever be anything what it was, but you just got to get started. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. So yeah. Your, your part in it will be greater if you start where you are and you bring some folks along the way and say, no, let's just clean this joint up. You understand what I'm saying? Let's let's reform it. Let's reshape it. Let's reframe it. You see what I'm saying? It's not as bad right. as it looks. Once you have a collective effort in its resurrection, it's dedicated to it. You see what I'm saying? And no matter That's what right. those numbers are, it's a few numbers or whatever the case may be. You see what I'm saying? You, you right. know, we know the faithful few. The faithful few get everything done. You understand what I'm saying? So we set aside opportunity to elevate them to to, to recognize them, we, and then we continue on to work. You see what I'm saying? That's right. incentivized, you know, labor. You know, uh, before there was a transition in nation Islam in regards to believers, that term, it was laborers. You understand right. what I'm saying? Right. So, you like the scriptures say, the work is plenty, but the laborers are few. So, exactly. we can tell you by your labor, by your work. You understand what I'm saying? So, because the, the Bible also, also says faith without works is dead. So, if this is something that you want to move to, if this is a centerpiece for you, we need to see the evidence in what you say and what you do being congruent. You see what I'm saying? So, if you exactly. about the work, you're doing the work in the righteous manner. You see what I'm saying? So, it's it's a lot, you know, of things that are there. The allure comes into the situation from my vantage point to where it it. It began about the labor of love for our people. But the allure comes in and starts to pull you in different directions. You see what I'm saying? And you lose focus and sight on why you were here in the first place. You see what I'm saying? Right. So you have to be reminded. You know what I mean? You got to be reminded. You know, we, we, we get 
the tools, these tools and our tool belt, and we, we got them. But if they're not actively in use, they actually, they rust. You see what I'm saying? It's still the same tool. It's not a different tool. You got to pull them. You got to use them. You got to make sure they stay calibrated. You have to actively engage your optimal use uh, when it's time to use them. You see what I'm saying? It might get wore down. It might get beat up. You might have to do some 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 modifications. And in this process, we go through that same, you know, way. We might get burnt out. We might get, you know, you see what I'm saying? You might be like, hey, man, what are we doing this for? You understand? But you got to be reminded to stay the course. Vision and sight ain't the same thing. You had a vision of what you wanted this thing to do, and it was not in your sight at the time. You just got started. You see what I'm saying? Closer and closer towards your vision, towards your goal. You see what I'm saying? This is the same right. situation we find ourselves in. You know, we find ourselves in a situation where we we have sight. And some folks got limited sight and no vision. You see what I'm saying? This is not a pipe dream. These things are coming into fruition, whether you actively participated or not, because That's we right. have an ancestral vision of where we're supposed to be. You see what I'm saying? You're going to be along. Uh, for the ride, you're going to train up your next generation to take your place, or are you going to be stuck where you are? You know what I mean? That's the truth about it. So, you know, but many are called and a few are chosen, and the chosen choose themselves based off what they do and what they say, being congruent. And, you know, families is going to get it done. You know, families is going to get it done. That's right. And do my part, you know. That's it. <clears throat> and try to, right. you know, like I say, each one teach one. Try to um, inspire the next generation. You know, because I tell right. these young people all the time, you know, hey, you can do anything you want to do. Do anything. You got every all the resources are right there in front of you. You know what I'm saying? It's in your hand. It's in your pocket. You know what I'm saying? It's like, shoot, you just gotta. Step out there and, and stay focused, you know, and, and and fight some of these and be a leader and not a follower. That's why I raised my daughter to be, you know, be a leader, not a follower. No, no, you know, because like gang culture, you know, some I couldn't, I, you know, I'm not gonna get on that, but I, I just, you know, I was fortunate that I wasn't brought up around that type of thing, but I also know that being who I am, that I could have never, you know. <laughs> I ain't fighting for nobody but my family, my people, myself. You know what I'm saying? I ain't that beef stuff. You know, we just got so many different things pulling at our children and at, at, at these kids, you know. And it's, it's sad right. out here. But I try to hold That's out. That's how they continue to stay in power. You know, I That's mean, it. we we have a accountability issue within ourselves. We send them we send our loved ones to, to them to be educated. You know, we go work for them, provide food, clothing, and shelter. We fortify them. All these things come together, and there's a level of accountability that comes to us. You see what I'm saying? And a level of responsibility that's pushed to them. So it's a pendulum that swings. So no one is blameless in it. You see what I'm saying? So we're dealing with that and having that uh, renewed sense of awareness. And then the onus becomes on us to continue to create opportunities where we can divest them of what they was invested. You know, our minds, our hearts, our consciousness. You see what I'm saying? And then right. start that systematic, uh, you know, removal from that whole situation. You see what I'm saying? So um, I know we're going to close out. So I give you an opportunity for final remarks. You see what I'm saying? I look forward to working with you in any capacity that I can. And um, just, again, let everybody know what's coming up, where to find you, how to support you, social media links, and you know, all of those things. All right. Well, again, I, I want to thank you for having me on your platform and what you do for our people. Um, I can be found on Facebook primarily, uh, Ricky Kelly. Uh, I got a Black Beach, White Beach page which um, keeps up with some of the things in the movie. You know, we do screenings around the country and different places. I've been fortunate to. Um, we got the Chitlins documentary. That's on the Chitlins 
um, page on Facebook, Chitlins from uh, from Slave Food to Soul Food, and look for that project to come out in late summer or early fall. Um, I'm still working on the uh, uh, Humble in the Jungle, uh, but we're on Southern Documentary Fund. If if anybody ever wants to make a donation to that project, we're working on a trailer as we speak with the help of uh, my friend Mike Zelensky. He's a world-renowned, award-winning cinematographer, filmmaker. He just gave the opportunity to work with him, you know, and he's he's doing this shooting for my documentary on that. So um, I'd like to shout out Mike. Um, I'm here. I'm in Durham. I'm in the Bull City. Get at me. You know, it's, this is it. Uh, if you want a T-shirt or want to buy a film, um, my wife handles that. Uh, the link is up there. Just uh, reach out to me, and uh, we can ship out your sizes, black, white T-shirts, um, hoodies, whatever you need, a um, uh, copy of the film. Uh, I think she's running a two-for-one special. I think two for $30, a T-shirt and the film, which is uh, the T-shirts are really great quality T-shirts. They don't shrink. It's a really good T-shirt. Um, I don't. If I can't wear it, then I'm not. You know, go sell it to you. So uh, that's it. I'm here. And if you have any ideas towards, like I said, when I was talking about the Black Vice, um, any show ideas, or if you have any interest in trying to collaborate on a project that, that's worthy of, of of our people being shown, and and, and want to put some um, and learn, you know, this game. Because you know the game is to be told for me. I'm I'm, I'm telling my people. I'm gonna share it with you. I'm not gonna hide it from you. And you know, it's, it's I want everybody to care. Everybody's got a story. I tell people all the time. We all got a story to tell. You know, um, whether it makes it to Netflix, maybe not. But you can still tell your story and inspire other people behind you to see. Hey, I can do this too. But that's it. You know, again, just. I appreciate you, brother, you know, and what you do. Appreciate you as well. You know what I'm saying? I'm, I'm coming up there to sit with you. I got to see what's going on. You know what I'm saying? Okay. That's what's up. That's what's up. <clears throat> and most blessings to your show, man, you know, and, you know, I hope you get a million subscribers because, you know, you – this is we need more of this. We got too many, too much, you know, just blah, 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 nothing. You know, uh, we need people that's talking about something, that's, that's trying to do something to uplift us and push us forward. You know, um, a strong voice, uh, a knowledgeable voice. You know, so it ain't about to show power and all this that's going on. You know, we. But I can't pass judgment on anyone. We just gotta, we gotta do better, and, and and we can, we can do all that. We just gotta be mindful of where we're going and where we're trying to get. You know, um, man, how we gotta get there, and, and to have more faith in your fellow man. You know, right? People, that's 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 we we lose a lot of that. You know, I made a post once about how I felt that if. If if you have a bad experience at a black restaurant one time, you're not going back. But y'all can right. go through that chicken sandwich shit stuff. Um, churches and they are uh, 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 Popeyes. They didn't have your chicken. You got to deal with all this, that, and the third. But y'all will keep going back. You give them opportunities that you won't give your your your, your fellow brothers and sisters. And we got to understand nothing's perfect, you know. And they struggling to make it. Be conscious of that when you go in there. You know, bad service is bad service. Right. You know, that's unforgivable. But it's certain things that, that just happens, you know, as a part of business. We have to overlook that and try them again. Hey, it was salty this time. Come back next time. It might be, you know, it could have been just, you know, don't give up hope on us. That's 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 what I say. But I understand you got to end this, uh, this uh, podcast, brother, and Thank you for having me, and thanks for the people that, that hear my voice and just get at us and, and, and keep keep look out for Kelly Entertainment Productions, Hanging Tree Productions. That's the name of my movie company, and we hope to do it again and again and again. 
Most definitely. Most definitely. Enjoy your day, brother. I'll be in contact uh, ASAP. That's what's up. All right. Hey. All right, shout out to my brother, Ricky Kelly. Uh, I put the place to check out for y'all to make a donation. Uh, make sure y'all get this, you know, either from Amazon or y'all can get it uh, from Queen, uh, Cherry Kelly. Um, yeah, so y'all can donate to his production. You know what I'm saying? Y'all see, you know, what's going on. What's happening? And let me just show y'all these shirts. I gotta get better with this. Um, while I go get this hoodie, 2x, $40, include shipping. You know what I'm saying? I went through every item yesterday uh, that I just received for the shipment right here. So you can get this hoodie. Let me show you another hoodie real quick. This hoodie. Shirt. One next to shipping ASAP. About to leave here and go to the post office right now. Before the next sit down, 4 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, we'll have uh, brother Gerald Emerson Rose, CEO and founder of New Order National Human Rights Organization, uh, and his illustrious dynamic dream team. Not I, but we, fam, will be in the building 4 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Give us a live update as a precursor for the show that's going on. Uh, tonight on Duke and House Radio, blogtalkradio.com, forward slash Duke and Radio, 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. We'll have the audio version, get a visual live update of what New Order has going on and what they've been doing. So y'all can see some of the team members and see some of the moving parts that are working around the nation. So uh, some of the family will be in the building. That's 4 p.m. Eastern Standard Time right here. Do not radio on YouTube. Also, uh, we have that other show, 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, on our audio platform. So, going down. And, and for my brother, Swap Boss, RBG Swap Boss, brother of the struggle, to redo that, sit down. Uh, make sure y'all check out Midway Music Focus. He will be on. Uh, with two interviews today. So make sure y'all go subscribe. Y'all see this subscribe here. A lot of things going on. Very busy week. Man. So I update y'all, uh, again as, you know, you get back on. So got the t-shirts, got the hoodies, got the student knowledge radio expansion slash scholarship. Uh, fundraiser on Facebook, so you know, check that out uh, on Facebook. Make a donation, spread the word. Uh, this is what we're doing. You know, so how we can get them here. Go to dpkapparel.com. Y'all see that. Uh, make a donation via Cash App. Uh, now it's going to allow on Cash App or PayPal.me. Go to last meeting. I was pretty going down. Really busy. About to make that run to the post office. You understand what I'm saying? Second month of day, man. Um, shipping out. Priority. Get it in a couple of days. So if y'all hit me today, you'll be able to get your item in two or three days. So Friday at the latest. I'll let me. All right. So check this here. Um, an hour. All right. Peace.